what's going on everybody it's your guy realistic here and i'm doing another tutorial for soundoracle.net and in this video what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to go over how to mix a kick drum and 808 together so they're happy in the mix and they're well balanced so these tips and tricks are going to work in any daw so if you're not using pro tools like i am no worries it'll work in your daw as well and you can also use stock plugins or whatever plugins that you have you don't need to be using the same exact third-party plugins that i have all we're really going to need here and this one here is we're going to need an EQ and we're going to need a multi-band compressor. Those are the two main things that we're going to need. The other thing that we might want to add in there is we might want to add in some saturation later but those are the main tools that you're going to need for this. So for everybody that's just here to just get in real quick with the information and get out and don't really want to know all the details, I'm going to show you real quick just the, the quick little run through of what that is here of what we're doing here and so what we got here is we got a kick drum and we got an 808 so let me hit play and this right here is a loop from oracle and i's brand new loop pack called torch the globe so if you like that the link is in the description below and there's 22 loops in this pack right here and it's filled with a bunch of dope loops just like this one So right there we got an 808 and we got a kick drum going here and what I'm doing here is I'm just boosting some fundamental areas in the low end of the kick drum. I'm boosting some of the high end in the kick drum here as well. That way it can kind of punch through a little bit and we can get some of that click going on in there. And then what I'm doing here is I found where the fundamental of the 808 was and I carved that out a little bit and then I cut out the, the rumble up until about 30 hertz right here with a high pass filter just to get some of that rumble out of there and then on the 808 here what I did was I threw on a multi-band compressor and we're side chaining that with the kick drum here so that way what's happening is the kick drum is just pushing the 808 down every time this kick uh, strikes <laughs> So you can see visually right there that the compressor is only reacting when this kick drum goes off. And then after that, the all I'm doing here is I'm cutting off some of the, the highs up here. So the kick drum where we boosted those can really shine through. And we don't need that in the 808 either. And then I'm also just carving out some of the fundamentals of where the kick drum was. I'm carving out some of those in the 808 here. That way the kick drum can have its own place in our frequency spectrum. So that's how that's the main details. So if you want to get in, get out, that's all the details that you want to know. All right. So for everyone that really wants to know how to like really dive in and, and see the parameters and why I'm using those parameters, let's check that out. And I'm going to go through this with you right now. So let's go ahead and let me reset a lot of what we got going on here. And then we can start from there. All right. So one of the main things that you want to do here it's actually really important to choose the the right uh kick drum and to go with your 808 so i have another kick drum in here that i wanted to show you right and so you can see the kick drum that i have in here that i chose has a shorter tail it, it kind of ends pretty quickly <music> Right, because if you look at how long our 808 tail is, that's really taking up a, a lot of a lot of space, and it's going to be taking up a, a lot of time as well. So we don't want a lot of like fighting. We want the kick drum just just get in and get out. And so I'm going to show you with this other kick drum that has a much longer tail. You can see right here, it's it's noticeably longer. So let's go ahead and mute this. I even cut out some of the low ends here, so you know we're we're kind of staying true to what we would do for the regular kick drum here but let's hit play so you can hear those are are clearly fighting right and if you listen to the kick drum by itself that's a great sounding kick drum there's nothing wrong with that kick drum by itself and that could work in a lot of cases but if you're doing something where you got a sub bass or an 808 that's dominating your your low end you're not going to want a kick drum like that and you also don't want to have something with this tail to just keep fighting so that's why we want to choose something with the shorter tail so definitely recommend that there so we got that there all right, and so the next thing that we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to carve out some of this low end here on the kick drum because we got to choose, you know, what, what we want to dominate our sub frequency. And usually if you got an 808 or a sub bass in there, 
that's what you want to, to dominate your sub frequency area. So we don't need some of this sub information in this kick. Now, some people like to do a high pass filter all the way up until 50 or 60 on their kick drum. I actually think that that's too much and it kind of depreciates the, the quality and, and some of those nice tones that you want in the kick drum and we lose some of the life. So I don't like to go that high. I usually like to only put my high pass filter up into about 30 hertz and that way we're kind of just completely removing all that rumble. Now, the next thing that I like to do is I like to carve out where the fundamental of that 808 is because what I'm doing is we're not totally removing it as if we were to use a filter, but we're lowering it down by a couple dB. So we still get a little bit of it there, but it's being pushed out the way. And so how do we figure out what the fundamental of this 808 is or where it's dominating? Well, let's go over back to our EQ here. And if you have an EQ that has some type of frequency spectrum on there, go ahead and enable that and we'll see where it's dominating. <music> So for the most part, it's dominating around this 60 hertz. You can see right there. So that's where we're going to want to cut it. And what's also really cool about if you have Fab Filter Pro Q3 here, it allows you to see what's uh, conflicting with each other. You just come down here, choose the 808. And you can see where this red line is. That's what's telling us what's conflicting. You can actually see we're pretty close here as far as going back and seeing where that dominant frequency was on here. You know, that's where, where that big bump was in the 808 there. And it's also telling us that that's where the, the kick drum is conflicting. So if you don't have Pro Q3, what I just showed you is going to work just fine. Pro Q3 just makes it a little easier for you. But you can still find out where the conflicting frequency is by usually just kind of looking to see where the other one is dominating and then just carving it out a little bit. All right. Now, you don't need a dynamic EQ for this. But if you have one, I encourage it because it can kind of help a little bit to compress it down. And all the dynamic EQ is going to do is it's going to be like an EQ and a multi-band compressor together. Basically, we're going to be able to cut the frequency and then we're also going to be able to compress it down a little bit. So I went ahead and I enabled that. So if I hit play, you'll see it compressed down. All right. So that's what we did there was we kind of were able to figure out where the the dominating uh, sub frequency was on the 808 and we just kind of cut that out a little bit. That way the 808 can really kind of push through. All right, now let's go ahead and find where this, uh, this kick drum here is kind of dominating. All right, when we look at the frequency spectrum, we can see that it's dominating in the, in the 60 area. We obviously can't push that because we want the 60 area to be really dominated by 808. 808 sound really nice in 30 hertz and uh, 60 hertz kind of around that range we really want to feel those those rich low tones right there. So we don't want to boost there so we got to find another area where this is dominating. All right, so I'm also seeing that it's dominating around 86. So let's go ahead and on our 808 here, let's go ahead and just kind of cut that around 86 here. I'm going to do a little bit of a wider cue here just because I, I want to have a, a nice little pocket there for the 808. And again, if you have a dynamic EQ, go ahead and enable, enable that. I definitely recommend that, but if not, you'll be just fine. So don't, don't panic too much. Okay, so now we've created two pockets. We got a pocket for the kick drum and the 808. So now they can rest and have their own little spot in the frequency spectrum. And so they can have their, their own little space to really cut through. All right. So next, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and I like to boost that kick drum fundamental a little bit. And that was around that 86 range. <laughs> That and the reason why I like to do that is because we cut out a lot of some rich low end in the kick drum. So I like to make up for it where we've created that pocket in the 808 and where that kick drum is really has that fundamental strong kind of punch so we can really feel that knock. And then the other thing I like to boost in my kick drum is I believe it or not, I like to boost pretty high up in this six to seven K range. Let me 
go ahead and get rid of it. And then with it. And what that does is it allows me, I can kind of pull the volume down of the kick drum a little bit now. And that way the, the 808 can really have a little bit more room. But we've raised some of this high end. So now our ears have been tricked into thinking that there's more power in this kick drum. But what we're really hearing is the, the high end. So we're not hearing the low end power, but our ears think it is because our ears associate what a kick drum is. And so it kind of gives us a, a little bit more flexibility right there. And then what I also like to do is I like to throw a little bit of saturation on there. For kick drums, my favorite is decapitator. You can use anything though, Saturn, stock plugins, trash, whatever. So I just like to increase it by like two or something like that. Not too much. You can see I got a little bit of a low cut there just because I don't want some of that rumble in there. And I just like to do that just to kind of have a, a little extra cut through because we are turning the kick drum down a, a little bit so the 808 has more room. So I like to just make up for that with some saturation and bumping some of that high end. All right, so then the next thing that we're going to do here, and this is, this is like the, the main thing, this is where the money's at is we're gonna side chain compress the 808 here. And you could use a regular compressor, but if you do have a multi-band compressor, I definitely recommend that. That's definitely where it's at. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to throw on this uh, multi-band compressor. And I like to choose the area where the kick drum is dominating the most. Uh, and then what I like about the multi-band compressor is we can keep this sub information, we can keep this down here, and we can keep some of these upper harmonics, and that way we're not losing that when the kick drum strikes and triggers the compressor down. We're just kind of pushing down where the fundamental of the kick drum is while still keeping some of that sub frequency, which will really sound nice on great systems that have like really nice subwoofers and stuff like that. All right, so how do we find out where this kick drum is? Well, what's really cool is a lot of these will let you see the frequency spectrum with your side chain. So I have, what I did was I told the, uh, I sent the kick drum here with a send. We have this as, uh, we're sending the information out. And then the key input of our compressor here, we're telling the compressor that we want the key input to be the kick drum. And then I've just told the compressor here, choose external source. So that way the compressor knows that the external source is gonna compress it down. So if I hit play, you'll notice it's only gonna compress down when the kick drum is coming. So you can see whenever the kick drum hits, we're triggering the compressor. If I mute the kick drum, nothing's happening with the compressor. So that's kind of where, where the magic is at. Because what's going to happen is when the kick drum comes in, we're going to push down the 808 just a little bit. So then the kick drum can have its magic moment and little stage to sign while the bass kind of just gets back and, and moves back and like, all right, I'm going to let you have your moment. And then as soon as the kick drum is done, the bass kind of comes back in and, and becomes the star of the show again. All right. So now we got to choose what we want our settings to be. And what I usually like to do is I like to set my range to be somewhere pretty close to negative four here uh, because I, I don't want to push it down too much. I still want some of that information to be there of the 808, but I, I just want to like push it down a little bit here. So we're going to do that and then we're going to set our threshold to be where, usually where I like to set my threshold is to just bring it down just a little bit before the range ends. So you see that might be too much for my threshold. Let's bring it down. So you see, I got a little bit of room there. All right. And then the, the next thing that I like to do is I like to set my attack to be fast, but not the fastest attack. I, I, I like to set it just a, a little bit above the fastest. And the reason why is I want that first initial transient of the bass to just kind of cut through real quick and then get out the way. All right, now the, the next thing is my release. And what I like to set my release is, is you gotta kinda pay attention to what this is doing on the screen here, as far as uh, when it's uh, the compressor's coming up, and then listen to when the kick drum is ending, because I want my release to end just about when the kick drum is ending. So if I set it to too slow, 
it, it's ending way after the, the kick drum has ended, and that can cause a lot of swelling and stuff. And if you want that for creative effects, that's cool. But a lot of times you, you want to have it end just as the kick drum is. So you got to kind of listen and watch. All right, so we we've kind of have figured out that you know kind of more for this kick drum somewhere around a medium release is where that kick drum is going to end and that's where we've set our release right there all right and then what, what's really cool is you can set your your side chain here to kind of uh show you what the the kick drum is doing on the screen so what I like to do is I like to find where that big bump is from the kick drum. So what we're seeing here is the frequency spectrum is actually showing us the kick drum, not the 808. So now what I did was I, I chosen where the, the kick drum, where a lot of that information and, and where a lot of that volume of the kick drum is, that's where we, we're turning it down right there so it can have its room to breathe. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it and I'm going to go in and out of bypass of what we did here so you can hear with and without it, and that's going to be the whole process here. So you can hear going in and out when we have it without all of our effects that we did. There's definitely some more muddiness. There's some things conflicting. And then when we put in all of the parameters that we did here, we're hearing it clean up a lot more and we're able to enjoy that kick drum and that 808 a little bit more. And what I'll do right before we end is I'll just go in and out with the kick drum soloed and the bass soloed here so you can kind of hear the changes with just those without all the other instruments. So yeah, you can start to hear everything kind of clear up a little bit and have a little bit more room. And that's how you do this trick right here. And that's how you can mix your 808 and kick drum to sound perfect every single time. So I'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today. Hopefully there was some information that was useful. If you're getting a lot out of this, but you want to see more, please feel free to comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future. And Oracle and I can definitely make that happen. We're always trying to find the content that you want to see. If you're liking what you're hearing from me, you can find me everywhere on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, realisticproductions.net. You can find my man Sound Oracle everywhere at Sound Oracle. And if you're looking for the best 808s, the best kicks, the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now, go to soundoracle.net. All right, till next time.